Mm-hmm. Banking is about guarantees. That's why I teach people dividend whole life insurance. I'm not getting into putting my money inside of insurance for an investment. It's not an investment. It will never be an investment. I get the protection of my money. Then it grows tax free or tax deferred. Then I get access to it tax free. If I have my business do it, it's a hundred percent write off. Then when I die, cause we all going to die or an executive dies, the company or the estate gets the death benefit tax free minus what you borrowed against the death benefit as you are making money move. There is no better place to store surplus cash than inside of an insurance reserve. Them niggas scared to make that move. We can't relate to that. I roll the dice. Shit, if I lose, I'm gonna be shaking back. Cause lessons learned within the loss. Just elevate the fact that trial and error just the only way. Ain't no escaping that. I wake up, hit a hundred push ups, then I'm at my route. Check on my stocks, see how they looking, then I'm sliding out. When you start seeing your progression, you stop having doubts. And what's the point of having clout if you can't cash it out? True to this game, but number life, ayy. Hey. Feel like we finna change the cycle, ayy. Hey. That's the most success, you know we thriving, ayy. Hey. That's the most depression for our rivals, ayy. Hey. Could teach a lesson on survival, ayy. Hey. You know I'm from the bottom. Welcome, my pocket, welcome people. It is your boy David Bellard. Host of one of the greatest shows on the planet, man. You already know the Black Wealth Renaissance podcast. You are tapped in. I'm here with my brother Jalen Clark. Uh, What's up with it, y'all? It's your boy Jalen, man. Another host of the Black Wealth Renaissance podcast. <laughs> How you doing today, my brother? Man, I'm doing fantastic, man. We having a good conversation, <laughs> chilling hey, with good people. Hell yeah, uh, dog. Drop my phone, but I don't know. Do <laughs> you feel me? I think man. they could have saw that shit. Huh? I say I think they saw that shit. It is what it is, man. But look, we having a good time. It was good pie. Running this joint back one time. We man. had to run it back, y'all. We had to run it back. <laughs> Technical man. difficulties. They didn't even need to know this. Hey, and we didn't have to let them know. Care, this man. is their second interview. <laughs> had to diddy them. You know how J. J. Cole did on that song? Like, oh, yeah. Hey, you talking about with Boss? He's like, hey, I could just re record the intro and not tell them nothing. But. but Fuck it. I know <laughs> this one. We're going to just do it this way. Yeah, yeah. But no, nah, man. Y'all, again, this is going to be another great installment of the show. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, we got our brother, man. He's been on the podcast before. He was at yeah. one of our events. Yep. Um, he did but, the live joint. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shoot, but, both y'all big, big events in uh, Dallas. Yeah. Because right. y'all That's first year, y'all came to Dallas like conference. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm like, okay. Hey, got yeah, bro. Got swinging to. for the fences, man. Yeah. You just go big or that's, go home. Hey, that's how you come into a city. Hell yeah. Got to make it our own and our own way for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, guys, um, before we get started, y'all make sure y'all leave that five star rating and review. We have none other than the business doctor, yeah. Yeah. owner of a multi million dollar conglomerate yeah. Yeah. of debt free companies, yeah. mm-hmm. the godfather of private banking. Come on, man. man. Founder of the private banking blueprint, teaching families how to build a legacy, building their own houses, and just Taking that family name and turning it into something that's everlasting, man. None other than Dr. Jake Taylor Jake. Hey, what's up with it, man? I appreciate hey, man, y'all letting me run that through, thing bro. back. Oh, man. Yeah, man. Appreciate you for coming yeah, through, you man. Know it's for all sure. love, it's bro. always we special you. whenever we connect, man. For like, sure, definitely. Bro. Uh, from the first time, energy's always been amazing, yep. really genuine. You're a person who pours a lot of value out and I always genuinely appreciate the opportunity to connect with you. I appreciate that. And I know our listeners will gain tremendous value just from the information that you have to share. Appreciate that, buddy. Especially in these crazy ass times. Bro, I can't wait. It's probably a better time now because you the real. You right? I got some. I told you so. (laughs) (laughs) I told you so. I got some smoke to talk. <laughs> hey, and I don't want to get into that uh, shit. <laughs> but b- before we get into the smoke, yeah. let's get uh, just into, like, David gave you a great introduction. But yeah. for those who weren't at the live events, you yeah. know, can you give us your background? You know, where did you get started and how did you find your way into the private banking uh, through insurance? Yeah, so uh, my name is Dr. Jake Taylor Jacobs, uh, a.k.a. Mr. Beater Bank. Um, I'm documented on the internet to bring this concept of being your own bank, private bank into the culture the way that I did. Um, and it's an amazing thing to see a bunch of people doing it. But like I've told y'all before, most people are doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually got started in the concept of banking. I was between the ages of eight and 10. Uh, my dad started a lending business and um, he went into the bank. He had $5,000 in the savings account at a, a credit union. He asked them to collateralize his account and then give them, give him, they 5000 And they was like, nah, Mr. Jacob, you got to, we got to do all these paperwork and sign and what's your credit score? He said, my money's there. Just collateralize my money 
and then just let me use yours. I want to go out, you know, go go out and invest in and lend it and stuff. And so they told him no. So he got mad, cussed him out, shut, shut his bank account down, grabbed his 5000 out the account, came to the car mad. And he looked at me in my eyes. I'm 8 to 10 years old telling me never depend on the bank for what you can do for yourself. And so at the time, like, I took it literal. Like, yeah, we don't depend on no bank. Yeah, I can be the bank myself. And I didn't really know what it was going to turn into. But that was like a drop of a seed. And what my dad told me, he said, I'm going to go be the bank. And he started lending. He worked at the Dallas Morning News. And then people that were in a tough spot, a short, I call it push lending, where they just need a push to get to the next check or a push, you know, to purchase something. Um, he gave those push loans out and made a killing, made anywhere from two to $8,000 a month, depending on how many people were active or how much you know money he spent on that liquor. But, um, but the point is, I, I learned that. And then seeing he had a journal with cartoon faces of these real people that worked at the Dallas Morning News with weird numbers beside it, and I lo- came to find out that that was his, like, his bookie book. Mm-hmm. That's how he kept bookkeeping. Wow. Yeah. And uh, uh, from that point on, I was interested. Uh, my granddad was in accounting. So uh, end up, I guess, you know, by fate getting into this industry and then figuring out that um, what I learned about traditional finance wasn't really the, the true finance of independence, the route that I wanted to go. Mm-hmm. And then I start studying the banks. And when I realized how they move their money, I was like, oh, I can do this, too. Then I went and start studying, well, who started the banks? Oh, these are regular families that ran regular businesses that took their surplus cash and didn't go buy crazy stuff. They lent it to people that was in the same industry that they were in, you know, um, as loans, commercial loans. Like, damn, I could do that. I can run a business. I can use my surplus cash. I can lend that money. And then my extra surplus... Line 41 on their on their uh, assets and liabilities ledger with the FDIC, they putting a bunch of money in insurance reserves. Let me figure out what that is. And when I was already in the insurance industry, then I figured out what that was. It was game over, bro. Mm-hmm. I, and all I did was just, like, literally just go, what is the bank doing? Not what these financial gurus are doing. What is the bank doing? How did this start? And if I can just do that on a smaller level and just keep it up, over time, I can, you know, Become my own bank too. Dope, man. So like, when we start talking about what the bank doing, right? Yeah. Traditionally, we think of the bank. People think, okay, I give the bank my money. Right. They take my money. They loan it out it to all. people. Right. And I take a small portion. Right. Of it. But you're telling us like that's just one of the things the bank's right. doing with the money. The other play is the insurance play. Yep. So can we get into that? Yeah, the bank is actually doing several things, <laughs> and so um, when it comes to being your own bank, it's about uh, selling products, services, um, and getting capital from other people. It's business, right? Mm-hmm. So that's what the people forget about the bank. The bank is nothing but a money management business. Mm. They say, we say, I can't protect my own money, sir, or I can't save my own money, or I want more convenience using my money other than carrying around cash and coins all day. So the bank says, okay, we'll give you a checking account or a savings account or investment account. You can put your money there and we'll give you a debit card. And for convenience, just swipe, swipe, swipe. And they're charging for the management of your funds. Mm -hmm. You're in business with them. But the moment you decide to put your money in a checking account that gains interest, now you're the lender to them. So now that's a total different game. So they got the, they got the service of, uh, protecting your assets with the deposit or with the uh, security deposit, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the protecting your physical assets. Then they got the service of protecting your liquid capital. Then they got the service of, okay, you want to lend with us? Open up a savings account. We'll give you 1%, 0.8%, but that's your micro loan to us. Now we finna go out here and play the banking game and start lending. And then they use their surplus cash because they don't trust their own accounts. They dump it in inside of insurance reserves. And when you dump it inside of an insurance reserve, you're doing a couple of things. You're guaranteeing the protection of your principal. So you keep the buying power of your dollar. And that's why I teach people there's a difference between debt cash and asset cash. Debt cash is the cash, that dollar bill that I got in my hand. And if I don't spend it for the next hundred of years, the value of the dollar is going to go what? Up. 
Down. Down. Easy. Do the influence. Asset cash is I got access to the same capital. But it's growing in value because it's getting interest to beat inflation. That's what I say. Clean your debt cash and make it asset cash. Mm. You just want liquidable capital that you can use for lending or business or whatever endeavors that you have to make more money. So when I'm dumping my money inside the insurance reserve, I'm getting a guaranteed 3 to 4% on my money every year, plus the dividends uh, of the profitability of the insurance company. So I'm getting four to seven percent guaranteed, not not indexed, not potential, not mirroring the market. Mm -hmm. Banking is about guarantees. That's why I teach people dividend whole life insurance. I'm not getting into putting my money inside of insurance for an investment. It's not an investment. It will never be an investment, but it is a great capitalized or a hedging system that you use to clean your debt cash, mm -hmm. create a, uh, um, create protection of your buying power for later, and you can borrow against it or leverage against it so that the compound interest doesn't get interrupted, and I can go out there and play the banking game. So you dump that cash inside the insurance. I get the protection of my money. Then it grows tax-free or tax-deferred. Then I get access to it tax-free. If I have my business do it, it's 100% write-off. Then when I die, because we all going to die or an executive dies, the company or the estate gets the death benefit tax-free minus what you borrowed against the death benefit as you were making money move. So when you think about the best place to store cash mm -hmm. before you start making investment moves, there is no better place to store surplus cash than inside of an insurance reserve. Mm. Yeah. Said turning that debt cash into, into asset, asset cash. cash. That's right. It's just protected. And That's right. So okay, I kind of want to talk through it more, right? Right. So you're taking your surplus cash, surplus cash, and That's bringing right. it in a whole life dividend paying insurance reserve. insurance yep. policy. Yep. So with this, like, how does that that part of it work? So you, do you have to fund it a certain amount? Um, Good question. Okay. So I I tell people this all the time. Um, most people say when you start an insurance reserve, I'm the bank. No. To be the bank, you need a business, you need a lending strategy or an investment strategy, you need the insurance reserve that you hedge against it. This is These are all of the components in a corporation to be able to make it a legitimate business. Mm -hmm. That's the functions of being the bank. Now, most people need a forced savings. So your insurance reserve starts as a forced savings. So if you don't got a bunch of money to lend and start the game yet, at least I can start storing cash inside this reserve that is surplus that I would spend it somewhere else. Now I know there's a future for my money. And that's all dependent on what your strategy is. Mm -hmm. So if I'm talking to somebody that's in real estate that want to make the play, they got $100,000. Of course, they'll dump 100000 in, then we'll figure out what the monthly or the yearly premiums would be. But if it's a mom or a family that's not used to saving, they want to start this process of getting surplus cash out of their checking account, that policy just drafts it out every month, depending on what they want their payments to be, what they want their uh, annual or monthly um, premiums or you know drafts into their policy to be. And that's all solely dependent on what their strategy is, what the purpose is. So there's not a... Just do 50 a month or 100 a month. Uh, it's, it just depends on that person, that family, and what they're trying to accomplish. So it's not just a cookie cutter, just do this and you're fine. It just mm -hmm. depends on what the exit strategy is. Got you. So I want to get deeper into all of this, but I kind of yeah. want to get some of, you know, the beginning origins, right? Yeah. You know, you said you, you learned from previous financial institutions that you were playing the game wrong. Yeah. How'd you even get your start in insurance? How'd you find your way there? Yeah, for sure. That's actually a good question, Jay. So <clears throat> I started a, a financial literacy organization on Wiley College in 2012. It was called Financial Literacy Organization of Wiley. So not that really, <laughs> not really that, uh, what's the name? But in 2012, um, our, me and uh, Dr. McLemore, who was head of financial, uh, um, uh, financial aid at the time, um, and I was just an education student. I was going to school for education. Graduated top of my class, by the way. Uh, yeah, I'm one of them rare I ones. They got yeah, one of them rare ones. But went to school for education, um, and he was like, I think that you'll be great helping me launch this financial literacy organization. And I'm like, bro, everybody in the organization, in accounting, business management, all that, he said, no, nah, you different. So let's do it together. So, And I didn't realize he liked 
how I led on campus. I was leading a couple of other organizations, but he also wanted my education piece mm. because they didn't have it. The um, curriculum and so building that's and right. Like curriculum that. building, um, uh, outlines, lesson plans, all of that. So we started building this organization together and we got funded by capital one, um, in, in Marshall, Texas, $4,000. Now in college, that's a lot. An organization getting funded four thousand dollars is a lot of freaking money. Yeah. <laughs> Not only that, to fund an HBCU organization. So we were the first in our school's history in a a student led organization to be funded by a Fortune five hundred company. So at this time, I'm excited. Four thousand dollars in 2012. The next year, they doubled back. The next semester, gave us another eight G's. So in the, in a year, a real year spell or a roll in twelve months, we got twelve thousand dollars for a college organization. Come on, bro, I'm on. Okay, so we we speaking at conferences. I spoke at an international business thing, and we're teaching financial literacy the way that they want us to borrow money, credit scores, student loans. Why you need the bank is indoctrination at its core. And so when I was about to leave Wiley College. Um, uh, Capital One, the uh, vice president at the time said, if you continue this on, because I was telling him I'm starting a nonprofit organization, we'll fund it. So I'm like, cool. So they they went to the funding. We went to the funding process. They agreed upon a specific amount, which was hefty. It was over 50 right out of college. That's, that's um, they didn't give it to us up front. I'm a kid. They don't trust me. But they had milestones that you mm-hmm. had to hit and they release it. Oh, cool. That's fine. But when I started to study the bank, I'm like, I'm, they're rewarding me and edu- paying me to educate people to need them. Mm. And they didn't even care if I use their bank's name or not. They just cared that I was teaching about the institution. All about, together. come on, bro. And so when I started to tap into that and I started to teach people how not to need the bank, the, 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 the bank was chastising me. Like we're not in, we're no longer in alignment. I said, don't you want a financially astute, financially solvent person that is getting a check-ins account with you? Isn't, doesn't that make our economy a lot stronger? And it was like, yeah, we, we, we not in alignment with that. We, you know, we, there are specific things we want to ask you. And if you're not willing to do that, we'll pull, um, you know, our funding. So they pulled it. Cause I wasn't going to stop teaching people how not to need the bank. So it didn't start off by teaching people how to be the bank. It was teaching them how not to need the bank. Mm-hmm. Um, because what I realized was I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, I saw my family, which got me interested in the financial literacy organization, literacy organization. Cause I saw my father who went from a lender top dog to like losing his job, losing extra capital and like trying to figure out life after that. I'm like, yo, that's a drastic difference. Mm-hmm. And when my father started dealing with financial issues, that's why this book came across. We are sick surviving financial cancer. Because I was able to statistically and scientifically prove how consumer debt is the number one cause of death in black America. Mm. I statistically and I scientifically prove how consumer debt is the number one cause of death in black America. Y'all want to play a game real quick? I'll prove it. Let's Let's go. All right. So number one cause of death in black America is what? Heart disease. Heart disease. According to the CDC. Pound it. Okay. Okay. The number one cause of death of heart disease is what? Bad food. Uh uh-uh. uh. Chronic stress. Hmm. Chronic stress is they what? Clogging of the arteries. Um, you got like uh, uh, dopamine and all that other stuff mm-hmm. that gets released in your body over a certain period of time, stress levels. So your body was built to deal with acute stress, quick stress. Mm hmm. Like, I didn't got my check this month. That's fine. Okay, who? I'm fine. But well, you don't have stress. that check every month. Yeah. For four generations. Now you're talking about now everybody's dealing with the same stress just on different levels. So when I'm looking at that, chronic stress is the number one cause of death. Your body's not built for chronic stress. It's not built to go through a stressful thing over a long, elongated period of time. It's like working out but never resting. Like I'm just pumping. Mm -hmm. I'm pumping. And when it hurts, I'm just taking protein, taking shots, and pumping. Eventually, your muscles and your body's going to what? Fail. Yes, because your body is not used and made for over long-term high stimulations of stress. So chronic stress. What's the number one cause of chronic stress? Financial. Finances. Fix your finances, you can fix your food habits. Fix your finances, you fix your patience. Fix your finances, like think about it. The majority of arguments, specifically in our community, at the table or in relationships, we never want to deal with the financial issue. 
Mm. Yeah, it's a conversation that not many other people not. Men, we don't have. feel as confident when we're not financially safe, stable, or solvent. That's X. a fact. Women don't feel safe if they don't have security of their man. So we both insecure in this mug. So we don't want to have the conversation, which heightens any conversation dealing with finances. And we already don't understand our financial construct. So anytime we get short on money, what do we do? We go borrow from master. Do you remember that master card? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Master's wow. card. Yeah. And you know how they give you dumb, dumb suckers at the bank. There's any Damn. candy that they can give you, but they give you dumb, dumb suckers. Oh, okay. Damn. So you swipe in MasterCards, and Master is still funding our life because clearly we don't still know how to take care of ourselves. So then we end up being enslaved to the very banking system that was started by slave masters. So just imagine the psychology and the ideology of banking comes from slave masters. How do I know this? My family was a, a, in a slave, um, slave family by the name of Mills, the Mills family. It was the largest. Um, slave plantation in the south in the largest by a landslide in Texas. They had 800 slaves on their plantation. Damn. You know what the Mills family did? They took the profits from the slaves and started what? Lending and started a banking practice. Mm. Majority of the banks that were started in America by Americans of certain stature were started by people who are what? Slave, slave masters. Homes. So they're used to what? Cheap labor or elongated la labor where you work for them as an indentured slave for the rest of your life. Well, if, I, if I'm depending on the banking system, what am I doing? I'm what? Depending. Rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And so what the banking system does, y'all know we be playing on point games. Right? Give me some points. I know, you know what I mean? I know everybody feel their way. But it's all a bait game because the bank knows based on life and the statistics of life, there will be a time when you can't, the points can't help you. You're going to hit a rough period of time because you're used to the bank being your bridge. And when that time happens and you get in debt and you lose your job or the deal doesn't go through or the re recession collapse, they're waiting for course corrections. And in that moment, they got you for a very, 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 very long time. So chronic stress, we stress about finances. The number one stress about finances is debt. Debt is like a cancer. It's a black hole. Mm -hmm. So once it's in one area, stage one, it's just affecting a little area. Not, not that big of a deal. You got control of it. And then it starts to get larger. Now it starts to consume a little bit of your daily thinking. You go from talking about, I wake, I wake up every day looking to serve God. But the truth is you're waking up every day to look at how you're going to pay that debt bill, that card note, that mortgage payment, and that credit card bill because they can come take your whole entire life because now they own it. Mm. So, so, so we go down this machine and you get to stage four financial cancer. This is when you have sleepless nights. You're stressed out. You can't think a lot. You pick up habits that you didn't think that you had. What drinking habits and eating habits and gluttony. And now you're outside of your body. Now you're having sex with multiple women or multiple guys just to cope with the fact that you're out of your mind, losing your situation. You now you control. spend more money on clothes because you don't know how to fix your financial situation. So you need other people to look like you still got it together but on the inside you dying inside mm. this is what most black families deal with on a daily basis over and over again which is why in this book that's why i statistically and scientifically prove that if you eliminate consumer debt if you eliminate consumer debt i'm just consuming the debt for basic stuff if i can eliminate that i can promise you you'll see a lot more healthier families in our community sheesh so yeah. get that, came up with that, got excited about that, and then I became stage four cancer. Really? And I was having dizzy spells, migraines all the time, passing out, irritable, irate, sleepless you? nights. Bro, I was 24. So I'm teaching financial literacy the way they want me to. Mm. And I'm stressed out. So I let everything go. Gave up. I called the BMW, come get the BMWs. Uh, we got kicked out of our, our spot. I was making $104,000 a year uh, my first year as a teacher with my nonprofit, but I was living like I was making a quarter million dollars a year. Hmm. So one hiccup, one mistake, one thing literally caused a domino effect of everything kind of transpiring and, and, and going down. And that's my story of what said, okay, well, how, what, what are the banks doing? And then I got more in depth with finances. In 2015, I met a guy named Tony Stevens in Mesquite. Um, he worked for Primerica. He's the one who got me in the insurance game because I was trying to figure out how can I get in a financial game. I just need to you get in the game. Get away from that bank. Yeah, I just, I just, I just want to get in the game. <clears throat> and I saw insurance with the banks 
I got in, uh, approached by an insurance guy, but Primerica has buy term invest the difference. So I was already at a conflict because they don't believe in the insurance reserve and they talk crap about the insurance reserve. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking at what the banks are doing. I'm like, OK, I'm not finna listen to no financial advisor when the banks that control the United States are doing this strategy. So I need to figure out this strategy. So then from 2015 on up, that's when I spent my entire, uh, devoted the rest of my time to figuring out private banking. And then when I did, it was up. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. <coughs> that is what's up, man. Dog. Dog. That, Sorry that for being a long winner. That was amazing, dog. We are sick. I, I hadn't had the opportunity to read the book, but I do appreciate yeah, you just I'm going, going get, into it. I got to grab it. I got to grab it. Because that analogy makes a lot of sense, especially when we talk about financial Financial stress being the lead cause of a lot of the problems yeah. in our community. Uh, being like sitting here, being consumers, you're always putting yourself in a position of struggle mm -hmm. in a sense. So like with you teaching people how to become the bank, yeah. becoming the owner in that sense, yep. they start with insurance reserves. I know you mentioned it varies from person to yep, person. Yep. So Primerica was teaching buy a term, invest the difference. Right. Which is fine for people yeah. that want to. Do that. So when, when buying whole life, whole dividend yeah. participating policies, uh, I'm buying it. And am I paying more than what I typically would so I can start becoming the bank? Or? Yeah, good question. So you want to overfund a policy when you're when you're practicing the banking concept where you're dumping surplus of capital. You're pretty much trying to create your own banking system. Mm -hmm. OK, and <clears throat> you're not buying it for the death benefit. You're buying it to get as much money that you put into your reserve. So we structure our policies where almost 70 to 80% of what somebody's paying. So if they pay a hundred dollars, 70 to $80 of the hundred is going inside the reserve. Mm -hmm. The 10 to 20 bucks is actually paying for the death benefit. We're one of the only firms that I personally know that don't take advances on policies. And what I mean by an advance, 99% of insurance agents, if you pay $100, they get a nine-month advance for that with the insurance company. So they get paid $900 for your $100. For the one, That's the why policy. they don't care. They just There's no interest in seeing, your, seeing you the long way because they making thousands of dollars on just a on pop, and I used to do that. So I know how commission breath they can become. Mm -hmm. So to make sure that we were not commission breath, to make sure that we're focused on the customer and the clients, we went completely as earned, which means every time you pay, that's when the insurance company pays me. I think that's the most ethical way to really do this mm -hmm. because it keeps you from thinking like, oh, this client going to make me $1,000 today. No, this client's going to make you 80 bucks or hundred dollars. And it makes you have a little bit more integrity when it comes to building it. So when you're dumping your money inside these policies, you're dumping them inside the reserve. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to how much ec uh, access you have to your money, like immediately. And in 31 days, you should be able to have access to 60 to 80% of your money. Like in 31 days, if your policy is not structured like that, you're probably in a, in a wrong policy. Mm. And, and, and mind you, if you don't have a job or you're not generating cash flow, your first focus should be on cash flow, cash creation, I'm glad making you said money, you. whether it's your job, which is the best cash infuser ever. If you if you're not really master the business thing, get your ASS back on a job. A high paying job. A good high paying job, which means you need to learn skill sets that will make you a high power, high paying value mm -hmm. to the job. So when you learn these skill sets, and that's what we teach, we teach the uh, specific skill sets that we consider high quality skill sets: sales and communication, um, web and funnel building, um, uh, uh, copywriting, email automation, system integration, uh, you know, and automation with system with systems and technology, uh, introduction to technology, so that you can understand the value basis of it. Um, we teach people lending; like these are all skill sets that you need in order to. To really be worth something that people are willing to pay and so with the surplus cash so if you don't have any surplus we got to fix your cash creation issue mm -hmm. then we got to fix your um how you manage it your stewardship then from there now we can start talking about surplus so it's not you know, a one size fit yeah, all you I just going to hop right in you can't just like, hop I right can't in be like oh man I want to start a bank today but 
I'm not making enough That's money right. to do so. That's right. You need to be a person who's, like you said, fixing that cash problem, your stewardship, got it. Yeah. So. I, I got a question. So you went, you talked about the reserves versus the premium, right? Yeah. So you're saying 80% is going into your reserves. 70 to 80, depending 70. on your age, your health, your risk factor, and how the purpose of your policy. So if you're younger or you got children, you may want to do a 60, 70 because uh, 30 to 40 percent of that money will go to your death benefit so you have a higher death benefit you ain't got no children or you could give a darn or you got enough assets to take care of everybody you really want it more for the reserve you can have access to to more money so it's all dependent on your need okay so with the death benefit i have to build that up in the whole life policy or is there like Let's say I buy a million dollar yeah. policy. Do I have to build up to a million dollars? Good question. Or, you know, once I die, I get that. Yeah, so the, you don't have to build up for the death benefit. Um, um, when you talk about life insurance or the insurance reserve, it's not necessarily about I want to buy a million dollar policy. Because remember, we're not buying it for the death benefit. Mm-hmm. We're buying it for the cash reserve. So the cash reserve and how much is going to the insurance, how we build it, will determine how much death benefit you have. And so we just play with numbers, no different with playing with, sales, you know, man. anything. We're just looking at the comp, looking at how it's comparable to you. Um, and we only look at the guaranteed side. Because so, cause when you sign a contract and you want to practice banking, I'm not trying to put no extra money at risk. My job is a risk or my business is a risk. When I want to practice banking, I want guarantees. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to play the investment game. When you think about an IUL, like they tell people to put it in, what's an IUL? It's mirroring Universal. the stock market. Mm-hmm. They uh, grow your cash reserve using options trading. So so you might as well just go straight to the market Cut and do the what the, I, yeah. come on you can get an index get you know you know invest monthly you know dollar cost average that to in order you know to 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 eliminate that so the purpose of it is for the reserve and what you're going to do against it you know uh, if you want to move forward and so that's why we kind of it all just depends on that with the death benefit though it's already accustomed to how much the premium is okay. so you'll see that price and on your illustration you'll see how much it is so you know exactly how much your children are getting guaranteed the moment you sign it and they take money out your account can you give me like this simple numbers okay. like for a person my age 28 no kids how would you do that uh it depends on your cash flow i can't Okay, so get, come on, give, you gotta give me a I'm case study. I'm making ten thousand dollars. Okay, a month, you making ten? And I'm living off of twenty, uh, not twenty, living off of two thousand dollars a month. So you're living so I got off eight thousand dollars excess. Okay, so you got eight thousand dollars excess. What I would actually do, I would take about two thousand dollars of that, and I would just keep it in the bank because you need the bank is for transaction. Mm-hmm. That money ain't. I'm not looking to grow it. That's not my savings. I'm not trying to that. save it. This is my transaction flow. Like, like I need quick bread. I need money for tires. I need money for, you know, whatever. I'm driving four rubber wheels. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get a flat tire. So that's what that you're, that's what that for. That cash is just there for you to be able to bail yourself out. I like to keep it in cash, but, you know, tomato, tomato. Potato to, to potato. <laughs> um, and then the rest of that, I will put it in the insurance reserve. And I will try to max it out at like 70 to 80. You can push 85 depending on how healthy and how it's built. Mm-hmm. Because it's not going nowhere. Mm-hmm. That money is in a reserve. That money is being, you know, a hedging against the market. And, and it's sitting there. You can always access it at any time. Depending on when you call the insurance company with the companies we work with, your money get wired same day. Wow. To right. your bank account. Or next day. That's shorter than a lot of people's trade accounts. You ain't never lying. One to three business days, typically. Yep. And the insurance reserve works the same exact way. So there's no, you know, there's no difference other than I know I have a contract that guarantees my 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 wealth and my, my future capital. Here's why it's important. If I'm dedicating my entire life to building wealth, mm-hmm. I'm the biggest asset. There is no bigger asset that I have, that I own than the body that I'm in. Nobody has produced, no asset has produced more money than this entity right here. So I'm going to, just like any other asset you cover it, I'm going to hedge against my life. So if I died before the completion of everything I'm committing to, my family gets everything that I sacrificed for. Mm. So it's a, it's a, I'm, I'm borrowing my future until I can build and buy it. So I'm borrowing, I'm protecting, I'm borrowing wealth until I own it. 
How do you own it? It's when you no longer need the insurance for the death benefit because everything else is flowing. So, so until I get wealthy, I'm going to continue to borrow wealth until I can own it completely. And it's, and you know, I'm, I'm pretty set in that, in that capacity. I love that. I love, I love that breakdown. Oh, yeah. So now I, you got me wondering <laughs> with the actual borrowing process, right? So when you borrow from the reserve yep. that you have, uh, what is it like a specific timeline that you have to get the Good money question. back? Anything yeah. like that? Um, Cause I know you mentioned like it's asset cash, yep. right? So, while you're borrowing the money, your yep. principal is still growing. Correct. You're still able to receive the dividends. Correct. And the interest. And the interest. Correct. So, yeah, how, do, how does that part of it work? Good question. So, a lot of people have a misconception that when you're borrowing out of your policy, that you are borrowing your own money. And that virtually doesn't make sense. That's why a lot of people, a lot of, you know, people buy term investor difference. Doesn't make sense to borrow your own money. I mean, it doesn't. What you're doing is because your cash is now an asset. You can't do that with cash in your bank account. Can't borrow against it because it's not you just pull it out. an <laughs> asset. And that's what my dad didn't realize. Mm. They didn't consider his cash as an asset because they know it dies daily. So once I put my money inside the insurance reserve, it's considered an asset. In all assets, you can leverage against it. Mm -hmm. So when I teach people about using your assets to get access to capital, um, that's what I'm referring to, not consumer debt. So when I'm looking at the insurance company, if I got, let's say, $10,000 or $100,000 in my insurance reserve, say $100,000, I want to borrow against it $50,000. They're just going to put a lien on my account for $50,000, okay? Mm -hmm. um, think of your account like a line of credit. If I use 50000 of a line of credit of a hundred, how much access do I still have? 50. 50. I can't go back and get a hundred. Like they're going to put a lien on that money because I'm utilizing it. Mm -hmm. So they're going to put a lien on that money. They, they, they borrow against it against the death benefit. So they put a lien on my cash, meaning I can't get my cash, but they borrow against my death benefit and they loan me my future money. Okay. At a simple rate, five, some do 4%. Uh, ours right now is at four point. Seven five percent, I think we got another one at four point. Just to clarify, when you say simple rate, say if I borrow the fifty, I'm only gonna pay four percent of the fifty. Of the every fifty, year. correct. Even if the say I didn't pay it back and the balance grew to fifty five, right. yep. I'm still paying four percent on the fifty. Of the fifty, you're not. It's not compound where it's four percent on the fifty and then whatever's there, then it's interest on whatever's there plus the interest on whatever's there plus the. That's how we get eight up. That's that compound mm -hmm. effect. That we want that to work shit. for us. Mm -hmm. So. They're going to charge simple interest on what you borrowed mm -hmm. un un unless you pay it back and then the, the borrowing is less, right? So my money is not touched. It's just collateralized. So that means just like a house, if I they burn the method, right? If I borrow against my house to get access for, to capital from the bank, my equity in my home is still going to do what? Keep going Supposedly, up. right? Rise. Well, I know for a fact guaranteed my capital in my account is going to, based on the contract of the guarantee plus the dividends. Mm -hmm. So I'm borrowing against that. I can't touch the 50, but the whole $100,000 is making me 4 to 7%. So let's do some math, okay? Um, pull out your calculator. All right, and you man. you pull out your calculator too. All right, he calculator man. I ain't going to lie. Okay, I'm going to walk you through famous. it. I'm going to walk you through it, okay? All right, let's get it. So, Jalen. I want you to do $100,000 times 6%. So times 0 0.06. What's that? 6,000. 6,000. I borrowed against it 50,000 from mm -hmm. the insurance company. They're going to charge me 4.75. So do uh, 50,000 times 0 0.0475. What's that? $2,375. What's the All right, so now you subtract, click subtract. Now, what's your number? Two thousand three hundred seventy-five. Yep. How much is the difference in profit that I make? Three thousand six hundred twenty-five dollars. So I made three thousand dollars leveraging their money still on my full on my full amount. Hmm. So this is the only scenario I still get paid to use somebody else's money. Hmm. So why wouldn't I clean my money in the cleaners first, borrow against it the policy, and now go play the investment game? Because my money on my capital is what? Never ending. So that money is going to continue to grow. I can wait forever to pay them back because they're just going to charge 50000 on the 
uh, 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 4% on the four percent on the fifty thousand. So I own do, my they, asset. They don't give you like a monthly payment. No, like no, you okay. control it. It's it's your it's your environment. Mm, you control it. You don't have to pay them back. It's not like a credit card. Where no, like, hey, you got this minimum. There's balance no report due. to a credit because they collateralized it. If you shut your policy down before you died or before you see it to the end, they're just going to subtract it from the hundred thousand. If you died, they're just going to subtract it from the death benefit. So let's do an example, okay? Hundred thousand is growing, right? I borrow fifty to go. I like to lend. Oh, that's my favorite thing. But there, people like to get in real estate and actually do the work. That's fine. So I take, the, I borrow against that. I take my fifty thousand. I go um, uh, uh, get a foreclosed home, fifty G's. I buy that foreclosed home. We already know is worth one hundred and fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. So that's really worth one hundred and fifty thousand. My money is still in the bank, making a hundred grand. You know, a hundred, a hundred thousand is still in there making interest. I use their money. I got this foreclosed home. We get it back up and running. Um, maybe 5,000 out of our pocket just to touch it up a little bit. And now it's producing us cash free, free and clear $900, $1,100 a month. So now I got cash flow mm-hmm. coming. That cash flow is coming. I'm using that to just pay the interest. I, I, I don't really care about paying a 50 back mm-hmm. right now. I just want to pay the interest so it keeps it at 50. So where, yeah, <laughs> it, it's still growing at that's that right. 6% interest. So I'm just keeping it. So say, say I got, say, say whatever, let's just, let's just hypothetically, let's say I did that I got a, a, a duplex making 1100 from each, 1000 from each, that's 2000 mm-hmm. That 2000 is covering the interest of the policy. So I'm fine. I own the asset. It's mm-hmm. covering the interest on the policy. Say I died. God forbid, I got a, let's say I got $4 million death benefit. I borrow 50, $4 million death benefit. I borrow 50 and I still got the house. You got $150,000. I got $150,000 house. They're just going to subtract the 50,000 from the $4 million death benefit. So my family still gets $3,950,000 tax free. Plus we still own. The home. The $150,000 home. That's what loan. did I lose? But if I put, if I did the same thing with my savings account. You playing a zero sum game every time. If you I, take I all can't your get money no out. debt. That's it. Yeah. The 150 is the 100. The me, say I did that with my stock account. Yeah, you can borrow against it, but it's too many variables mm-hmm. that are costing, that will cost me. My money is tax free growing. I can access it tax free. It's tax deferred as it grow. And because I do it through my business, 100% of the money that I put into my policy is a write off because it's an expense. Key man insurance. So I t- the company takes the policy out on me. Mm-hmm. Say I put 100000 in a year. The company pays $100,000 into this policy because they took it out on a key person of the company. Now that's an expense for the company. So a hundred thousand dollars written off. I get access to sixty to eighty thousand of the hundred thousand plus the death benefit that's gonna pay my corporation. And I, bro, I'm I'm not listening. I'm Mister Be the Bank for a reason. They ain't explaining it like this on the internet because they not doing it. They they not they not hey, practicing they banking. Bro, he just busted my head. I like, remember we were looking in the key man yeah, insurance. Like, and I didn't. I thought key man insurance. I'm looking at like, oh, that's term insurance. No, that's that's only that's oh, that, it's insurance. So you can use it for term, but I want to play the banking game. Yeah, bro, that's bro. The ba- the banks cannot just take out a policy and just have it just on the cash. They got to take it out on a person. Mm. So they take it out on their executives, or they collateralize a loan. Or, you know, somebody, if you got a permanent policy, most people don't know, you can use that as collateral to get a loan. You can't do that with a term because it's not considered an asset. Yeah. It's you written. You're written it. Yes. So the banks did it. Walmart got wealthy by just taking out permanent policies on every employee because at that time you didn't have to tell people. If they were W-2, you can just get a policy on them. So they just got a bunch of them permanent policies and were just storing cash. Inside the policies and then borrowing against Collateralize it. Collateralize it. That's damn. called company-owned life insurance. When you do it like a bank, it's called bank-owned life insurance. What a time out question. So whenever, like, a company offers you life insurance, at, can they start borrowing against that shit? No, be, no, that's group. That's that's not okay. the same of okay. them owning okay. it. Okay. Right. Life. 
Yeah, that's group life. We're talking I was about, about to say, God damn. No, we're talking about key man. Okay. So so this is why I tell families, y'all are not a family until there's a corporation that binds you. Mm. Mm. Don't you need don't you birth certificate let you certify who your mommy and daddy is, right? Yeah. You get married, you get a certificate that justifies that. Certificate. Whether you go through the uh, just as a piece, you go through the corporate. There is still some type of paperwork with your church, with your, you know, with your religion, with your whatever that justifies that y'all are legally together and they have rights to your stuff. Or if you don't go that way, they have contracts where you sign a contract between families that say y'all are a union. Correct. Mm -hmm. So why don't I have a corporation for my family? Good question. It doesn't make sense. If our birth certificates are corporations, if America uh, is a corporation, if the Fed Federal Reserve is a corporation, my the family IRS we just is a corporation. We just, we just a group, a mob of individuals, and that's why most most families are off centered. Corporate, there's no corporation to create guidelines. There's no corporation to that. I'm glad you're getting into this. So, so when I'm so I'm, I'm sorry. So let me just finish. Yeah, so when I'm looking at that. Now my family's a personal corporation. Now, when we get paid or we do side jobs, all the money goes to the corporation. Depending on who did the job, the, the corporation can pay out right back the person who did it. But these, these is how the families operate and how they work. So now these are key men in different departments. One can be a lawnmower. One can be a, the lender of the family. One can be in the insurance. All money goes to the family corporation. And then the family corporation can pay payroll and bonuses and everything out to the people adding money to the pot. What does that do? Now all of them are key men leading specific departments based on their specialty. Everybody gets a policy. All the death benefit goes to the corporation, which is owned by the family trust and we get to play the banking game with our surplus cash see like that's why i tell people like when you talk about private banking it's more than just the insurance the insurance is just where we store the cash like like nobody's talk when you talk about a home you're not talking about the refrigerator like you just want to you want a good refrigerator that can store what you your resources that you depend on but when you go into the house there are more amenities that are important other than just the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. The insurance policy is just your refrigerator. It's, it's to preserve your most precious resource, which is your liquid capital, the money that you can move stuff with. But the other world outside of that, if you ain't doing it, you can't teach it. Man. Bars. So yeah, what your question was? I it's act, all it's actually <laughs> about the, it's about the family. See, isn't this one a lot so better? This it's, one, it's, it's, you, you cooking, yeah, bro. this nigga is cooking. Uh, so we still it, gotta check the other. I got yeah, a question. Yeah, yeah. Is yours geared towards the insurance policy and continuing that? Because I don't want to derail this conversation <laughs> to uh, where I'm about to go. It, it's about risk, risk, and so you you can go with your question. Oh, no, okay, I, I like though. the okay, okay. I'll let you go. I'll let you. Okay. Go. I mean, if it's risk, nah, nah, nah. You got it. You got it. This nigga That's good. He was just so, he was gonna uh, make it up. He was gonna make it up. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, uh, yeah, it was risk. Uh, uh, yeah, it was gonna be something along the lines of risk. <laughs> but uh, so you were bringing up like the family and the corporation, yeah. right? And that's something that you actually spoke about at the Black Men's Summit. Yeah, and I it was basically you about you know how you're structuring your family. Yeah, how you guys have a mission statement. Yeah. how you have a crest for your family. Yeah, can we talk about? What brought on that idea and how you're doing those things? Studying the banks, bro. The banks are nothing but well-run businesses controlled by well-organized families. Mm. Those families got crescents. They got flags. They got colors. They got code. They got creeds. They got pillars. They got mottos. We do that for our companies, don't we? Yeah. Thought about Black Wealth Renaissance. Y'all looked at a couple of logos, didn't you? You looked at what colors make sense because green means this and black means that. And you start playing with certain things, right? But we don't do that with our family. Thanks. There's a graph uh, that my brother sent me uh, today and it talked about like how with your children, how much time you spend versus your spouse. I saw that. And bro, I saw that. It, it screwed me that up. That shit fucked me it, up it, too, bro. It screwed me up. And then made me think about how crappy of a son I am too. Um, talk about lie. family too, and I don't, too, you dog. know what I mean? I'm doing it for the family, but I don't, you know what I mean? But anyway, so. I'm lost like a bug. It's okay. It's chart. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Cool, 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 cool. So, cool. so, 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 um, so, but here's the deal. When you think about that, right? The reason why families fight is because we were put on this earth to have dominion. A kingdom, 
We all want to, uh, to, to control something. So if the family doesn't have a mission, the mission of the family becomes to tear each other up. Mm. What else you going to do? You were created on this earth to have dominion. That's why when you get in a job, you want to excel. You start a business. You want to grow it. You get one car. You want to get another one. You get a house. You want to get a bigger house. You got this girl, but you, you know what I mean? So we all are wanting to conquer something. Mm -hmm. But when your family has no mission, you end up conquering each other. Mm. When your fa when your when your family y'all are building a family, if y'all don't have a mission on where you want BWR to go, the vision of it, and if anyone's not aligned, I love you, but we got to keep moving forward. It's easy that way. This is where we want to go. But most people, when we get in relationships, what do we get in a relationship for? Love. To have sex, be in love, to have babies, to settle down, and then after that settlement happens and that urge inside of you to grow. Now y'all beefing with each other because there was no plan after that. It's like saying, hey, let's start a business. Let's get a corporation. Let's get a product. But after that, we just leave it to the wind, huh? Oh, this marriage isn't working. Oh, this business isn't working. No, y'all didn't start it with the right intentions to be there to the end to figure it out. And when you understand the mission, you're going to have slip ups. Bro, I ain't the best, right? You're going to fall. You're going to be distracted. But what keeps you glued, what keeps y'all from quitting on each other? Is when you can go back to the blueprint and say, this is what we're fighting for. Are you still on point? Yeah. Are you still on point? All right. Well, we got to clear this up because we both are committed to the mission. And that's the problem with a lot of people. They don't realize it. And, and it has a lot to do with not having an identity. Yes. I want to know the nature of my physical being where I came from. Okay, cool. But I care more about the actual nature of who my family is, what we represent. Scripture says your name is more powerful than silver or gold, but we all put silver or gold before our name. That's hustling backwards. Man, shit. Shit, Jake. Yeah, I'm going to let that breathe. So, um, a lot of people say, I don't have a family, Jake. My parents, I just I can't deal with them. I don't go by the definition of family that everybody else do because when I study the banks... Mm -hmm. What I began to realize was a lot of us lack of information got us talking out of our butt. They say, you know, uh, successful royal families, they believe in incest. That's not necessarily true. Here's what successful families used to do. They used to go by houses. And the house was typically defined by what the nature nature of your your craft was. Mm -hmm. Blacksmith. Mm -hmm. Bankers. You know, these were houses that you identified yourself like social classes. Right. And what successful families used to do, they either used to do one or two things. They used to all choose a name together that meant something that that was in representation of that house's capability. Or they would all take the last name of the most prominent one and become family through contract, mm -hmm. through trust, through obligation with the intention that we cross marry to pure. That's why you're here to say we got to purify the bloodline. That's what they mean. They're crossing. So if we all is one, two, three, four, five, six brothers in here, right? Say we all get together. None of us are more prominent than the other. We're just kind of like a collective, but we want to build a family, your family. I go by the definition of a society and the definition of a society is, um, uh, the definition of a society, and I usually always have it up, is an organization or a club formed for a, for a particular purpose or an activity. And there's another one I like to use, which is an organized group of persons associated together for religious, benevolent, cultural, scientific, uh, uh, economic, political, uh, patriotic, or other purposes. So it's people that's deciding to say, hey, my relative's trash, but I rock with us. Mm-hmm. This is, this is our, it's six of us. Okay. We're going to choose the last name banker. So all of us will say, okay, let's hyphenate banker, or we're going to associate ourselves as the bankers. So now we're the banker bros mm -hmm. by contract. We're family. We belong to the house of banker. We all know internally. We're not physical blood, Yeah. but the world don't know that we're not 
physical blood. So when we have daughters and I married my daughter to his son and then your son to his daughter and my son and your daughter, they're like, they nasty. Yeah, they not blood. They over here, uh, boy, y'all stay away from them. No, they're, they're committing to the commitment of the contract. Yeah. We're purifying the bloodline because we know that we all on the same page. We all had that same mission. We all got the same mission. And that's what most people miss. So if you don't have a family, you got to create a society. That's why mingling with finding like-minded people, joining communities and saying, you know what? Okay, your last name may be Smith. My name is Roger. Let's call it the House of Smith Roger. And the House Law of firms Smith- do that. Yes, bro. But it go it goes it goes further. So now now y'all got constructs and functions. So like my best friends, we brothers contractually. There's some more stuff that we got to make sure that we good on. You know, got to make sure the paper tight. But we living on a compound. The money from the company is the is to go into the family compound, our family that we're building. Mm. What we got going. Why? Because I'm not finna go around searching for, no, I know what we building and each one of my brothers got a different ability. One is amazing with technology. The other is a fool when it comes to marketing. I'm amazing at business development and lending. We got one that's really great at photography and branding and all of that. Those are all components that are needed. We got one of our brothers that's learning trading. I ain't got to learn all of that, but because we're committed to the union, the union of us, the company drops, we lose a little bit of money all together. We make more money. Now we're focused. Now we buy the compound. House, 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 house. We build it together. You see what I mean? When you start thinking like that, it makes it easier for you not to think in the short term. It makes it easier for nobody to get envious of each other because we know, like, yo, this surplus cash, you know, we even got the vision to where we're going to have our cars and everybody get a different car. And we just goes into the, and you just pick whatever car that you want for the day. Why? Because it's easier for all of us to say, let's get a $675,000 car. We got these other cars and then we just use it collectively. It's easier to build that way. But if I'm the top man and we all best friends, but I'm the only one that's living there, envy is for sure going to creep in. Mm -hmm. You can't help it. You can't help it. So when you think like that, you got to start thinking more of a family construct. And it'll be, it's hard to get in between me and my guys. It's hard. Other people that try to get, they feel like they don't fit because they don't. Mm. Because you got to be a certain type of way, committed for a certain length of time. We'll deal with you, but we ain't going to fool with you because we know what we doing. And we know what we committed to long term. And so, yeah, yeah. So that, that, that's why I tell people like, you ain't got no family. You can do that. So I take care of my biological family. I do my part. But everybody know who I'm building my family with. My wife already know, like, this ain't no, we, yeah, yeah. That's dope. That's a different spin on family than, like, the traditional sense, especially in our community. Most of us got broken families. I'm from the country, man. Family is the people with your last name. Mm -hmm. Family can be the people that, it should be the people that you're building with. Especially when we're talking about building legacies and building wealth as a community. Yeah. So y'all niggas was on my top a little bit earlier. <laughs> so I, mean, so I was just playing with risk. No, but I did have a serious okay. question. Because uh, at the beginning of the episode, yeah. you mentioned you had some I told you so. so yeah. You know, and I, I want to give you that, that 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 grace to go ahead and do that because. Let me reintroduce we, myself. My name is Banks. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, I mean, we're going through something real crazy, yeah. right? Um, the whole crypto yep. DeFi landscape is getting really it's fucking pummeled. falling at the yeah, scenes it, right it, now. That shit's falling apart at the scenes right now yep. with the whole FTX craze. Yep. Um, so you teach private banking yep. with a guaranteed contract with a policy that's going to have guaranteed interest. Yep. And one of the sexiest things about the crypto yeah. in space, the whole space is that in this DeFi world, right. you were able to get really good returns. Um, from Come the on, lack on. of regulation mm-hmm. and right. you're able to loan out your money. And right. Now we're seeing a lot of this stuff fall apart. Yep. So I just kind of want to hear your opinions on all this. Um, you said you had some I told you so. So did you not believe in the crypto industry I won't at say all? I, I, I won't say I don't. I still do. Okay. Um, but cryptocurrency is not a freaking investment. And people were investing in a cryptocurrency. It's like me saying, I'm going to keep investing in pesos. Like, you earn currency or you trade currency. You don't invest in currency, bro. 
Like, and the notion that people were saying, like, just invest here is going to go. Of course it collapsed because you got a bunch of people who are lacking of skill playing the gambling game in a market that they still don't understand. So when you think about currency uh, in Slice, uh, Slice with uh, greatest crypto player ever, Slice, Ignacio and Justin Manley were the first brothers to bring cryptocurrency education to the culture. And a lot of people and a lot of influencers uh, when it get, got information from them and then went publicly like it was their information. They were the first organization in our culture to get over 3,000 people a part of a free education group actually teaching people that you earn cryptocurrency. You do not invest cryptocurrency. And I just wanted to give them their flowers because there's a lot of vultures that a lot of us looked at like the man and like, oh, you the one, but they all ciphering information from them three black brothers uh, uh, with the greatest crypto play ever. Slice, Ignacio, and, and man. So, when you, th when you think about currency, the currency, I love it. It's the bank. It's nothing but a d digital currency. It's nothing but mm -hmm. like a debit card online or a token when you go to Chuck E. Cheese. We don't go to Chuck E. Cheese and be like, hey, bro, it's going to be a surplus coming up of kids in the summer. So let's get all the tokens in winter and in the summer go resell it back. Bro. Constru like like based on the construct alone it doesn't make sense yeah. that's why when it came to the crypto all of these market makers not not financial educators these were influencers that were market makers and a lot of them were getting back end deals getting checks on the back end to promote these businesses like it was theirs. They got given tokens and they just, that's why they kept saying, let's just raise it up to 0 0.01 and we all will be rich. They didn't care about the utility of the coin or of the currency. So that's why a lot of people get in their head split because it goes back to what you know. When it comes to banking, it's about what you know. What's the first function of banking? Business. So I don't care if you got cryptocurrency or Jordans or we in prison and stamps are our currency. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to get paid. Why? Because I have a skill set and a service that anybody will pay me for no matter the currency. So if I understand that, yeah, you can pay me in Bitcoin. Why? Because the value is going up. You're I'll, earning it. I'm earning it. But I'm understanding the function of the currency. Mm -hmm. I want to earn the currency. I'm not just passing. No, bro. In. Unless you're trading. Like crypto, uh, like uh, Chicago, uh, like crypto uh, block Chicago, uh, uh, a bully, um, Chicago crypto block bully. Uh, he teaches trading, and he teaches people get off of these wallets that are you giving custodial rights. The same thing we do with the banks. The same you, shit that just happened with FTX. Bro, they, they the took banks your do the same thing. The, the banks do the same thing. You lose custodial rights of your money. So why would I? Work all this time to earn money, not to learn how to manage money, to give custodial rights to a bank that if the judge says seize all bank accounts and they'll give you a stipend or an allowance of your own money while you in court as they seize your account. How can they do that? How does the bank just give it up? Because you don't have rights to your money when you give it up like that. That's why you got to tell them when you get more than 10000 out the bank account, you got to tell them every time what your occupation is. But you know what my damn occupation is. You see that shit come in for the damn you see direct what, deposit? Come on, bro. So so when you think about that, so that was, that was my biggest I told you so. Because when we had our conglomerate group, everybody know the name of that group. I never once endorsed crypto. I never once endorsed trading. I only talked about business, lending, and banking. When I got in crypto, I borrowed money out of my policy and I stored it in crypto because I was making a lot of transactions in crypto. Not so I, not because, you know what I mean? Like, not not just because. I was making transactions, we was making investments in crypto, and I wanted to understand, and of course I grew my portfolio. Uh, I, I got my hat taken too because somebody told me to send them some money and I didn't realize that that's like a wire. You can't get that back. Yeah. And so they disappeared with a lot of my bread. It's okay. There's a crypto where you can't even sue them because it was through crypto. That's yeah. why a lot of crooks and scammers like to stay in the crypto world. And a lot of gurus and people that don't really have a real business be in a crypto world, right? So you got that. It's untraceable. It's untraceable. 
So that was a market that was being overused, and a lot of it had to do with the bull market, with all this crazy stuff, the, the money that was being forced into the market. Bro, the inflation rates are going up not just because of the Fed. The inflation rates are going up because people refused to work because the government was giving payments and mm -hmm. stipends. So there are more jobs than people that are willing to work labor jobs. Then we had a mis misunderstanding. Now people are like, I don't get paid what I'm what I need to get paid at my job, the government paid me more than that, so I ain't never going back to work for nobody. Then when that stipend gone, your broke ASS made an oath that you ain't never gonna work for nobody. Now you struggling. And so that this is why people can't buy things no more. But there are plenty of jobs, there's plenty of opportunities. And like, you know, I don't agree with everything Dave says, but Dave Ramsey said just get out the way and let the market course correct it. And we would have figured it out. So with that being said, crypto, I told them so. Don't, don't get in that game for that. Two, stock market. You have it or first, uh, y'all ain't seen them, them, uh, not that many ads on crypto and stocks no more. Huh? No more courses. <laughs> them courses disappeared. But banking is still alive. So uh, with the stocks market, only the people that's really about it still making bread, top and down. But the other people that were them bull market geniuses. Bro, oh, but yeah. guess what? When you have a big platform, you can move the market, even a needle. If I got a platform where 300,000 people, I'm going to give a stock tip. This is where I'm investing my money. This stock tip, just telling you where I'm putting my money. 20,000 going to say, shoot, I'm, I can, I'm going to go put $100 over there or $1,000 over there. Of course he made his money. He bought it before he told Bro, me. Bro, it's the biggest Ponzi scheme ever. Still no utility. Still don't know how to read businesses. Still don't know how to read the, the papers. Still don't know how to read the uh, uh, end of the year reports. Still don't know, like, you don't know how to evaluate a business. Don't know how to look at the profit and loss statements. But you investing in these businesses and, and, and you know, whatever. So a lot of people in the stock market getting their head crushed. Why? Because I'm a firm believer. Don't get your butt in nowhere that you can't, you ain't willing to. Lose the bread. That's why I love lending. I can uh, I can attach to an asset. I can I, I I can I can put you on contract. I can come I can come and get you and sue you for it. I can't do that in the stock market. I can tie like equity. I do uh I do uh equity lending right. So for an example, if it's a company that I really want right, say I got a company that I really want or I really like. Every company gets a tight, and I love those companies that stunt, that flop, that floss, and that's really heavy on credit cards because their day comes every time, and all of them always need a push loan. Same thing, go up full. Come circle. on, Dad. <laughs> and the push loan is it's the gap, man. I got a big deal coming, but I need thirty days, man. I got. I got behind, or I'm getting sued because if you're doing big business, you're gonna get sued. My mentor it's told me, Jake, game. if you want to play big, be okay with being sued. Some people just sue you just to drain your liquid capital. My guy Tim told us the same thing. Dog. So just be ready. So so they get in those because they don't plan for it. But guess who always is ready? The banker. Hey, man, I'll, I'll lend you $50,000, but I don't want interest. No interest. What I want is I want equity. Mm. I want equity. Um, and it's going to be for 90 days or 45, 45 days or a year. And, or I won't do interest or we'll do agreed upon fixed rate. Okay. How much is this worth to you? 50,000. Okay. So how much does it save of your business? Well, sure. You can save me my million dollar business. So this $50,000 is worth more than 10%. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So what, what do you, what, let's, let's work the deal. Uh, my guy Pace Morby, or I was listening to him earlier today on YouTube. He does the same thing, but we're real estate. So I got that right. So I'm looking at the business, you know, here go $50,000, but I, I don't want your business. I want to own uh 50% of that technology that you have. Well, this technology uh, is only doing 10,000, $20,000 a month. You, you want, that, yeah, why? Because if it's doing ten, twenty thousand dollars a month, you don't know how to market, you don't know what you're doing, and nobody is touching it, and it's doing ten or twenty thousand a month. So yeah, I want to have ownership of that technology. So we signed a deal. Um, at the end of the ninety days, or they always, bro, people that borrow money are always 
egotistical, bro. They're so arrogant that they double down on themselves and they over leverage and the banker get them every time. So you okay? I can I can pay you back in forty five days. Forty five days, okay, cool. Fifty thousand, cool. So we cool with a ten thousand dollar assignment to you know help you. Yeah, cool. Sixty days, I'll pay you back. No sweat. That's fine. Hey man, forty five days come by. <sighs> Now, I ain't going to call it on you. I ain't going to call it. I ain't going to call it asset. We good, bro. Just how how long you need? Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, I need a year. And a lot of people may say, man, that's shark lending. I don't do that to consumers. I do that to business owners that over leverage themselves. They get themselves in bonds that they put themselves in. And I'm a businessman. I want assets. I want to build my portfolio and I want to get deals at a price point that I would never get it. And the best way to get it is like in real estate. When the owner is under distress or under duress. Cool. I'm here for you, bro. Hey, but it's no longer 20%. I want 50%. Ah, I can't do 50. Let's do 49. But I'll have it. Cool. Year come. No pay. I'm calling. Now we're on the tech. Now we rebrand the tech. Now we repush the tech. And now I'm worth more. My 50,000 is worth more now. Because the revenue has increased. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So so I'm, I'm looking. I like that deal. Stock market. Yeah, it's cool. They driving Lambos and stuff. That's amazing. But I like this route. Buying the business. Because. Giving the business the capital. And then if they don't. Because they day trading. Yeah. They still don't own nothing. They in and out. Mm-hmm. Swing trading. In and out. Me, I'm I'm picking up assets along the way, playing Monopoly with business. Just oh, you need a loan, bro. I've, we acquired two tech companies that way. Um, I acquired a um, uh, uh, an insurance agency that way. That you know that wasn't my direct insurance agency by lending. Just just by lending and finding those opportunities where people need it. People can do that in real estate on the um, earnest money. You know, sometimes a seller may say, hey, I need you to put $1,000 down to let me know that you're serious. Most wholesalers don't have that money, but I do. Come on, bro. When that deal happens? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, 1000 okay. I don't, we ain't doing interest. Because uh, interest alone, you know, for it, it don't do a lot if you need 30 days, 90 days, or whatever. So, okay, cool. Just like I do in business, you can do it in real estate. Okay, how much is, the, how much is this $1,000 mean to you? Well, I'm going to make twenty five, so I'll give you 5000 for it. Cool. That's the deal. I gave you one. I saved your deal. That's worth five thousand dollars. I got six thousand from the same one thousand. They walked away with twenty, and I just made a thousand dollars turn into six thousand dollars. Like that, thirty day turnaround, couple of day turnaround, depending on when you come in on the deal. So when you start looking at opportunities, it's it's more beneficial for me as the banker to be in this position. When you think about uh, a bank, banks do invest in stocks, but it's typically preferred positions. Mm -hmm. They want guaranteed dividends. They want to participate, uh, to get cash flow, but they're hedging. Mm -hmm. They ain't ain't no, they not out here just, you know, lollygagging. They ain't raw dogging the risk. Yes, correct. Certain. So, so that's why I'm just like, bro, when I look at the market, I told everybody it's a bear market. I mean, it's a bull market. It's going to correct. And a lot of y'all going to lose your hat. I will pay somebody $400. If you can go find, Three of my videos that I did in 2020. Find three videos I did in 2020 that was literally talking about hit my DM. And uh, uh, Amir is going to uh, give you a shout out. Because I've been saying this, bro, since I got on the internet. It's hyperinflated right now. And y'all need to really, really, really develop certain skill sets. Because when a recession comes, it's going to hit hard. And only the big dogs. We've been yelling the same shit, too. And niggas niggas was in our comments like, y'all niggas tripping. Yeah, good. But bro, bro you, you're always the lunatic until the rain comes. And, and this is and this is what you gotta understand. Bankers hide during the bull and they 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 devour during a recession. Because they the ones with the capital. Bro, yeah, people call me crazy. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's funny that me and my family built an eight figure company debt free, yet people that haven't even made seven figures in one business tell me that my strategy is wrong. Mm. It's the craziest thing in the world to me. So when I look at it, yeah, y- y'all going to see like 
Like we in the works, and I'll let y'all know on the y'all y'all want to y'all want an exclusive. Shit, drop that Go shit. Don't drop that shit, man. Yeah, we in the process of acquiring a bank. Be in the bank for real, for real. Listen, bro, we don't play no games with these people out here. We ain't, we don't play no games. Like some people, bro. Some people, come on, bro. Some people act like they they not really. They not really. We're in the process of doing that, and it's. Having skill sets, finding opportunities, right place, right time, knowing how to close deals. All of those things are important because it's during these times where plays are being made. And we're going to have one of the only banks in America that is a transaction only bank. There's no lending, borrowing of your money. Your money is there. Your money is safe. If you want to switch it to a stable coin crypto, you can be able to do it. That money is going to stay in that reserve. The only way that the bank makes money is through transaction. That's it. Hmm. Just, just a service fee and a That's transaction. That is Going fire. back to ethical lending or ethical banking. The bank is for transactions. That's what it was for. Storing capital in transaction. And yes, we got debit cards too. That's hard. That is hard. Listen, bro. Black old bank. That, hey, listen. Eth- ethical bank. That, hey, bro. And guess what? And Visa has already approved the, the, the swipe pitch of the can, cards. Can you, can you drop the name of the no, bank? Sir. Or not, no, sir. Not yet. No, sir. Not yet. No, sir. Not yet. I'll okay. give y'all the exclusive when we drop. Okay. That's when we, when that's we that's launch it, we, we drop, I'll give we y'all the exclusive. We make sure to put that out there because a lot of people need to know that. But... Jake, man, this has been a great one. This has been some, pri- some Hell yeah. pressure shit. <laughs> it's some more shit I could get into, but I know we got we coming <laughs> we got, up on yeah, time. We got we got to wrap, so I'm gonna ask you, uh, and I, I feel like you've answered our questions. But yeah. We still want to ask them, man. All right. So I wrap up questions. My favorite one: uh, What's a personal finance tip or principle that you live by that you'd like to share with our audience? Never depend on the bank for what you can do for yourself. What my father told me, and um. You know, uh, our our mission, our number one mission is to make families great again and get people to understand that we tried the it, that we tried the trial or the testing of single family independent. It don't work. We tried it. I think weaponizing women to become slaves again. I don't think I like that. I, I think there's a lot of guys who think they're alpha and they're really like Zeta. Um, 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 and the truth is a lot of us are out of line is because we're out of alignment with God. A true man is supposed to be a servant to all and servant to God first. If I kneel to God, my wife is going to kneel beside me. And because she knows I'm committed to God, she's immediately going to be committed to me. And usually when a woman bucks, I'm talking about a a holy woman, not a street walker out here. That's on the internet, popular. Talking about a holy woman, somebody that's with a mission. That woman typically bucks when she no longer feels safe. That woman bucks when she doesn't respect you and your decision making. So the man thinks just because I'm the man or because I make the money, she's still looking at the decisions you make with the money. Mm -hmm. How uncomfortable she feels with the security and all of that. So we understand that our, 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 what we want to do, we want to make families great again, get some understanding, get some structure back to people's lives. Families, the number one purpose of a family is for accountability. That's it, bro. Notice most successful people, they marry, and then when they get there, then they divorce. And then they always regret the divorce later. They're always like, dang, I messed up. Like, like, like my frat brother Shaq in the sci-fi. You're like, man, no, I messed up those. I, I had a good one. You look at a divorce I after you make you it. Was a sci-fi. Yeah, I heard. So, 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 how, why do you think I'm dominating the internet like this? <laughs> oh my God. It's just in me. So, uh, so, so, so you got that, right? But a man needs a family for discipline. Mm. We need something to fight for, or we just gonna be fighting everything. We need something to hold ourselves accountable to. That's what the family is for. When you want to go out and you're like, damn, like I, I really got to take my children to school in the morning. And I want to go out with the boys, but that's the right move. It's being accountable to something. It's like being on a basketball team. You could be a star, but if you're accountable to a team, you probably going to think about the team before you shoot that shot, even if you shoot it or not. So that's the, that's the biggest focus is that we want to do. And that's why we created our our free private banking, private banker society. We create a free community that's not on social media um, where we give courses and education. We teach people how to be bankers. And, you know, it's, 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 it's something that we're launching on 
a full fledged on Black Friday, the private banker society for sure. Awesome. Mm, that's awesome. Okay, I got my. I'm gonna ask two questions because okay. I'm not even gonna go into the third with you. Uh, <laughs> but the first one: Are you yeah. frugal or are you a flexer? I'm flexing. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a frugalexer. <laughs> frugalexer. I'm a frugalexer. When I need to be frugal, I know how to. I know how to anchor down. But when it's time for me to stump on next, I do know how Popping to flex. Out. Yeah, I'm gonna pop out. <laughs> like my flexes are subtle now, though. My flexes are like. You may look at my watch and it looks like a normal watch. Look now he looking. <laughs> I've been looking at it. <laughs> but it's 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 a six, seven thousand dollar watch. It look like a Walmart watch. You know, like those are my those are my, you know, flexes. Like things that you don't know. Things that don't have the logo on it, you can't really tell. But it's the quality that I like. Like those are the things that I care most about. It's it's flexing like that. But if if my family, we can't eat good, the whole family can't eat. I'm tightening everything up because I'm not finna go and splurge and have a bunch of fun and go on vacations when I know the family, we we constricted right now because we're acquiring things or we took a major, you know, big hit. We anchor in down. Second question. How are you building a legacy for your family uh, to live beyond you? Uh, these right here. People think that um, I write curriculums for them. I actually write curriculums for my family. This is the blueprint. Call it the blueprint. Nobody is ever going to have access to it. I'm sorry. It's oh, not for damn. sale. <laughs> but the reason why I'm showing y'all this, and the cover will change just in case anybody want to try to come to my office try to find this green one. <laughs> but this is how I build every company. Right here. This is how I can get the same result every single time. Every one of my mistakes and my successes are in this blueprint. Right here, how to do it, how to find a marketer, how to find a big influencer, how to set this up, how to structure this, how to get into distribution. Like everything is here. So this is why no matter what product I launch, how to launch a product from scratch, I actually do get that to the people. The steps that you need to take to monitor that product, to test that product is all here. So my children ain't going to have to take no course. This is, the I'm the course, course the for them. It. Now here, teach them banking. I wrote it and it's so thick and it's bro. Y'all ain't seen this, have you? Have y'all seen it? I seen when you walked in with it and I was yeah. very intrigued. Bro, let me show you something, bro. This is a textbook, bro. I'm not Dr. Jake Taylor Jenkins for nothing. This is a textbook. 267 something pages, eight and a half by eleven, bigger than my head, hardcover that I wrote for my family, just in case I died. They can pick up the textbook and say, okay, boom. And I'm explaining to them and I'm talking to them in my words, how I would talk. I over explain. I give examples. And the, that's why people, when they buy this and they join, when they join the Power Bank Society, they're going to get this package. This is the blueprint. I'm giving you my family's blueprint for you to do it yourself. I show you how to build a family from scratch, how to organize the family, how to build the pillars inside of it. Why? Because I wanted my children to be able to take something and be all right. This is the blueprint for us to be able to get back to what we need for our family to be. And this is just the challenge. I talk What's about trust. Last one? I, gotta ask the last I talk one. about trust, corporations, real estate, uh, uh, private, uh, private uh, 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 investing in business, and public investing in business. I actually interview seven-figure people in this book so that my children can see me in dialogue with people of this day and age that were making seven figures. What strategies were they using? How to operate certain things so that they're getting more than just daddy. But this it confirms what daddy is teaching. See, a lot of people out here winging it. I'm not winging it, bro. That's why I have 100% confidence in anything that I produce, and I know when it's not going to hit. Even if it makes us money, I got, a blue, I got a blueprint that I follow. And if two or three check marks on our launch is not hit correctly, my team know. I'm, I'm, we scrapping this product. Next site, new, they don't be, bro, this is the first time, I think the first time they actually finding this out. This, bro, we can do a $30,000 launch on a product, and if two or three of my lunch points are missing. Yeah, y'all, This we're going to wrap this one up. We're going to finish the class. We're going to, I thought you said, I, you know, I thought. <laughs> but this one ain't it. <laughs> we we missing some stuff. I got a plan. We got a blueprint. I'm going to play no games. And also in this book, I teach you how to lend. Promissory notes, exactly how to secure assets, bro. Yeah. Private banking blueprint. Hey, but But, you know, a lot of people say they practice private banking, it's but I still ain't seen no side. textbooks or no side. curriculums or no case there studies. You go. <laughs> 
I still I still ain't I still ain't seen I still ain't seen them come out here and show us nothing other than like theory of insurance IULs. Mm. Mm. Man. Man, this has been a powerful episode. Hell yeah. Man. So for for everybody, Jake, I just wanna before we wrap, have where can they follow you? Yeah. How can they get the private banking gotcha. blueprint? Gotcha. And for the BWR people, can we do a little something special for them? Yeah, so so um for the uh, you can find me, Jake Taylor Jacobs, on all platforms. T-A-Y-L-E-R is how you spell Taylor. Jake Taylor Jacobs on all platforms. You can uh, get access to the curriculum and our free banking community at privatebankerssociety.com. And then, yeah, we're going to work something out. We're, okay, we're, we're okay. going gonna to get some where y'all going to be able to participate for real. Um, and so what I would uh, suggest y'all to do is click the link for the Private Banker Society Um uh, um, that they put in the notes, so you'll be able to go directly to it, and BWR will get, you know, they they yeah, love we, from that. We do something special yeah, for you. I know we always it. show well, y'all love. Yeah, they're gonna show you some love for sure. Appreciate that, brother. Appreciate, appreciate that, that, bro. Man, this has been another great one. This is yeah, hey, man. This was I'm a head glad buster. We ran this I bitch back. Can't, I ain't gonna lie. He can't I do. told y'all. Big step. Hey, yeah, listen. <laughs> I'm representing my family, bro. I'm on the first one. I, I, I it was good. But, but it wasn't the standard, bro. I, want, I like when God, if he put a white glove on, he do this and say, Jake, God dang it, you missed a lot of stuff, but there ain't a lot of dirt on his hand. <laughs> I like that, bro. I love it. I, I love like it. that. I love it. Yeah. Oh, okay, one more thing. Don't be afraid to take losses. Don't be afraid what people are going to say. I man, I did a lot of things wrong, you know, you know, and you'll do a lot of things wrong, too. But I was, you know, 28, 29, running an eight-figure business with 52 full-time staff. Ain't no training for that, bro. You got to kind of figure that thing out. So don't be afraid to lose. Don't be afraid for people to leave you. Be committed to your mission, and God going to see you through for sure. I love it. And next time, we're going to talk about how you lost 3.5. Yeah, 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 yeah,